Magandang hapon po sa ating mga butihing guests who are here today. Let me start by saying that I am opposed to any depletion or removal of our co-Filipinos in so far as the jobs that they have is concerned. However, we cannot just purely and simply use the cloak of protecting our employees without making sure that we stand by the mandate that was given to us. Moreover, we cannot also cover under the auspices of our employees when in fact we are actually doing some confusions in the name of public health. Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, allow me to focus on Section 4 of Republic Act Number 7966. Allow me to quickly read Section 4, Your Honors, Responsibility to the Public. The grantee, and in this case, ABS-CBN Broadcasting Corporation, shall provide adequate public service, public service time to enable the government through the said broadcasting stations to reach the population in important public issues, provide at all times sound and balanced programming, promote public participation as in community programming, assist in the functions of public information and education, conform to the ethics of honest enterprise, and not use its station for broadcasting of obscene and indecent language, speech, act or scene, or for the dissemination of deliberately false information or willful misrepresentation to the detriment of the public interest or to incite, encourage, or assist in subversive or treasonable acts. Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, I have been a doctor for several years, and mind you, one of the current viruses that we have been encountering, especially in areas where these, there is a huge monopoly of a media provider, is a virus that we call public health misinformation. There was a report sometime in 2014 of a flesh-eating disease. This was an exclusive report made by ABS-CBN. Namangha po kami, Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, dahil lahat naman po ng mga doktor nakakaintindi that when we actually talk about psoriasis, grave as the situation may look before the layman's eyes, nakakatakot siya minsan tingnan, yung iba, hindi po iba, halos karamihan po ng mga pasyente ng Psoriasis ay pinandidirihan, lalo na pag meron sila mga katabi sa trabaho, sa pampublikong sasakyan. But never did we expect that this will be blown out of proportion, labeling a province, labeling, I believe, a certain town or two areas in that town to have had a flesh-eating disease. This actually gave a huge impact on that town. Next slide, please. What was covered in the news later on was that the Sangguniang Panlalawigan wanted an apology from our major broadcasting network. But Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, kanina po kasi, rinig na rinig ko po ang sinabi ng ating butihing resource person who happens to be handling uh, the news. And um, I'll, I'll go over it in a while. Pero ang naisip ko po, eh, nag, ang naging tutok po ng sambayan ng Pilipino ay yung sama na loob na naramdaman ng mga opisyal, which I believe has, eh, can, can be given credit. But did we ever think of the patient, of the family, of the hundreds or millions of psoriasis patients out there who has to live with the day-to-day -day stigma and discrimination na kapag malamig ang panahon, kapag umuulan, ang kaba at takot nila cannot be beyond explanation. And here is our major TV network bloating the issue. May, may I be refreshed, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, what was the action taken by the station on matters related to this? ABS-CBN. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Good afternoon, uh, Deputy Speaker Garin, and thank you for the opportunity to address your concern. 
I remember the story that you are referring to. And uh, it was aired in our late night newscast, Bandila. Hours after the airing, that story was flagged and our attention was called. We immediately launched an investigation into the uh, erroneous airing of that story and um, imposed severe disciplinary actions against our airing journalists at that time. We also made sure that we tightened our editorial controls in terms of stories that were being covered and aired. I also sent a team to talk to um, provincial officials to see how our news division can help them in dealing with the impact of that story, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for that kind response. Doon po ang problema eh. Tinutukan po natin yung mga opisyal dahil nagreklamo sila at tila nagkaroon ng resolusyon calling somebody persona non grata. But my focus is not only on our officials. Paano po yung pasyente? Paano po yung mga pamilya ng pasyente ng may psoriasis? Paano po yung patuloy na nilalait ng, pampu, ng, ng ibang Pilipinong, ng ibang kababayan natin, hindi nila naintindihan yung sakit? And instead of ABS-CBN being an instrument of educating our public, and, and unfortunately in this situation, inaging tulay tayo para i-discriminate palalo yung ating mga psoriasis patients. Did you ever think of helping the family? Do you have advocacies on uh, explaining to the general public what psoriasis is all about? How we can support them? Na ayaw naman nila, subalit ito ay sakit nila. Ito naman ay maski nakakatakot tingnan, ay hindi nakakapanghawa. Dahil ang naging reaksyon po ng ABS-CBN, ay tumutok dun po sa mga opisyal. At nakalimutan natin na yung taong nilait natin, E taong may buhay at nasasaktan at hindi lang po siya ang psoriasis patients. Marami pa po sila. And they are actually good people, nagkataon lang nagkasakit. Isang sakit sa balat na wala pong gamot o kung meron mang gamot, e napakamahal. Let me move, uh, and, and then Mr. Chair, if I may, nakakagulat po kasi kung meron po talagang proper vetting, when your reporter went there, she was in complete personal protective equipment. Na talagang visual pa lang, takot na takot na po. Um, I am not bringing this out in the open to demean the, the broadcast network. But then I'm bringing this out dahil minsan pag tayo lumalaki na, nakakalimutan natin na marami pong mga maliliit na tao na kapag ating nasasagasaan, eh walang wala po silang kakayanang lumaban. Just like in this instance, papansinin natin dahil sila e board member, sila e gobernador, pero paano po ang pangkaraniwang Pilipino? Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. Mr. Chair, allow me to refresh the memories of our distinguished colleagues here on a victim who was murdered in Cebu. Um, uh, I think the, the name is uh, Christine Silawan. Previous slide, please. Okay. Na, nabigla po ang sambayan ng Pilipino dahil isang batang babae na napakaganda. And of course, the mother who was really grieving, the neighbors and the families grieving, wanted justice for this victim. And to refresh your memory, your honors, naging malaking issue po ito sa Cebu. But it was a puzzle why she was skinned, why the body looked like that, and the PNP came into the picture. When the PNP came into the picture, nagsagawa po sila ng sariling investigasyon, and um, hindi pa po nalalaman kung sino ang may gawa nito, but apparently, again, in your station, distinguished sponsor, or distinguished um, officials of uh, our giant network, Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, out of the blue, there was an expert who was claiming to have conducted autopsy on the victim. 
Can you please uh, flash the next photo, please? The next slide. Next slide, please. Okay. That's the victim there in the middle. Meron pong isang bata na nasa gilid. At kung titingnan niyo po, eh napakakawawa nung batang ito. This is actually the boyfriend of Christine Silawan. Siya yung unang naituro dahil siya yung nakita na huling kasama. Pero minarapat ng karamihan na hindi ito tutukan dahil tiningnan muna at hinintay muna yung investigasyon. I don't know what the attitude has been formed. Pero minsan kasi kapag malaki ka na, gusto mong palagi kang nauuna sa balita and sometimes, I am not blaming the officers and the management of ABS-CBN, siguro minsan pag sobra na tayong malaki, eh hindi natin nababantayan yung mga maliliit na bagay. But if we look at the situation, it is a huge impact on our people. The boyfriend was alleged to have been the murderer of this victim. But the PNP refuted this. The only problem here is that the PNP was not given the platform that you gave to Attorney Acosta and to Dr. Erwin Erfe, an expert that you always publicize in your station. I agree he is a doctor, but myself being a doctor, we all know that he is not a pathologist, nor is he allowed to perform forensic pathology. Ano po ba ang nangyari? Dahil sa malawakang pagbabalita, this innocent boyfriend of the victim, ikinulong, and at his young age, he cannot understand why, while he was grieving for the death of his girlfriend, he was also pleased in prison, subjected to things we cannot imagine. Nangyari po ba ito dahil siya'y anak lamang po ng isang mahirap na pamilya? Nangyari po ba ito dahil siya'y isang probinsyano na hindi alam kung paano lumaban sa ganitong klaseng laban? Ikinulong po ang batang ito habang siya'y umiiyak dahil yung kanyang girlfriend ipinatay. The only link there ay eh may nagsabing sila ang huling nakitang magkasama sa kumbento dahil sa Kristan yung boyfriend. But because the police investigation were pointing to a, large, to a lot of blank walls, they tapped the NBI, opened, I, I believe a, a cyber crime, uh, the experts and, and, and uh, cyber crime came into the picture and opened the Facebook of the victim. So much so that it led them to a possible suspect. A businessman who actually wanted, um, who had an infatuation with this young lady. Na mas may pera at mas may kaya kesa dito sa boyfriend na mahirap. Ano po ba ang nakita ng PNP? Nakita na nanlaban yung bata, hindi po siya narip. At yung bilang mga eksperto po, ang sabi po ng ating ibang mga pathologist is that there is a possibility that the victim was left there for a few days at posibleng nakain ng kung anumang hayop or a stray dog. And that was the explanation. But there was seemingly a sensational news claiming, this was again claimed by the public attorney's office, which for reasons we do not understand, is almost always being given an exclusive coverage by your, by your, by your, uh, by your station. At ang sinabi nga nila doon, inarape daw yung bata, binuhusan ng asido. This was in contrast to the findings of the real forensic pathologist under PNP. Isa po ang epekto dito. Pwede pong mawalang bisa yung kaso dahil yung totoong eksperto eh hindi naman nabibigyan ng platapor makagaya ng binibigay nyo kay Dr. Erfe. But what pained me here is that we have here a young boy who was already sent to prison and the judge in Cebu found out that it was not supported 
by any evidence. And they were already, there was already in the custody of the police, the victim on the left, uh, the suspect on the left, who actually confessed to the crime. Pero pilit pa rin inalabas sa balita, so much so that the president gave a directive, o oh, yung batang yan, pag pinatay niya yung, kanyang, yung isang batang babae sa Cebu, ibalik sa kulungan yan. Of course, there was confusion because sometimes, if you're a very big, no, almost always, if you're a very big network, and if you come out in the open, at sinabi niyo, ito ang kasalanan ng isang tao, naniniwala na po yung lahat. And I was looking at our national treasure earlier, there was actually semblance in what he was saying. Yes, at the end, after several months, nalaman din yung katotohanan, pero hindi na ito na ilalabas masyado sa balita. But will correcting the wrong that was mentioned before, will correcting the fake expert that you tried to portray as a forensic pathologist on television, will that correct the psychological torture that this young teenage boy underwent while in prison? Next slide, please. And that's it. Ito po ay eh, palagi natin footage na nakikita po. Ang sinasabi ko po ay eh, pwede po meron kayong mga rason. But I, earlier as I was listening to um, the opening statement of our distinguished resource person, ang sabi niyo po sa slide number five, it is your response to a call to tell the truth and work for a cause greater than ourselves. Tama po yun. But a cause greater than, our, than ourselves is actually coming out and listening to the real experts, not to the friends of your employees or newscasters. At kung yung atin pong biktima was murdered, Mas masakit po itong pangalawang biktima na sa batang at murang edad niya ay eh, naikulong, pinalabas, ikinulong ulit. Dahil nga po, yung eksperto na palagi niyong pinagbibigyan ng ere, e eh, hindi naman po pathologist. Next slide, please. Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, I really didn't want to open this up. But um, I do have high respect for ABS-CBN. As a child, nakikita ko po nung maliit pa po ako, kayo na po ang unang bukang bibig. And even my daughter, when she was growing up, we were always excited to bond together to watch the soap operas. The good channels and the advocacies that you have made us bond together as a family and allowed us to talk about a lot of things. But as the years passed by, my eyes were starting to open to a few people whom I've known. Mga taong walang ibang ginawa kundi magtrabaho. Mga taong kinaingitan. People who are not powerful. I'm really sorry, I'm just a little bit emotional because this person This person, hindi ko po siya lubas ang kilala. Nakilala ko po siya unang-una nung nagkaroon ng Yolanda. Nakilala ko po siya nung nakikipaglaban siya sa SARS at ako po nung mga panahon na yun, e wala pa po sa larangan ng kalusugan. Nakilala ko po siya kung paano siya magtrabaho nung labanan nila yung leptospirosis. At lalo ko siyang nakilala nung linabanan natin yung Ebola at yung Merskov. He was the only infectious specialist in the central office of the Department of Health. He was a regular person being interviewed by your station because he was the DOH spokesperson during the time of Secretary Ona and was carried on during my time. I'm referring to the former Assistant Secretary, Dr. Lyndon Lee Sui. Lyndon was a jolly person. He dedicated his life to DOH despite all the efforts from the private sector. Next slide, please. 
He was always the person who gave calm to everybody when there was a lot of fake public health news. This is the person who protected your network when the flesh-eating news came out in the open. Siya po ang, nagpapa, siya po ang lumabas at nakiusap na wag nang palakihin and siya po yung kumausap sa mga pasyenteng mesoriasis telling them that everything will be alright that it was not the usual thing that happens and who will expect that Lyndon will be victimized by the impunity that sometimes happen in a very big corporation next slide please Lyndon was not really in the limelight, but he was forced to, simply because we have a lot of pandemics, we have a lot of outbreaks, we have a lot of emerging infectious diseases. And that prompted him to work hard. Lalo't lalo na po, na sa buong departamento, he was the only one who, ag who, who, who agreed not to practice and instead focus on the Department of Health. Probably because of his hard work, when President Duterte assumed office, I'm not sure what happened, but maybe because they were looking for competent career people in the department. Director Lyndon Lee Sui, who was not appointed as assistant secretary or undersecretary during the previous administration, during the time of former President Aquino, by virtue of his being career, and by virtue of his performance, he was appointed as assistant secretary. Next slide, please. And that prompted him to work harder. But sometime in December, and even in November, although there were already a lot of intrigues about him being appointed, he was always cited as somebody who did not campaign for the president, as somebody who is not really, so, who, uh, as somebody who was a spokesperson during the time of the former president. But despite all of this, he was appointed by virtue of the career promotion inside the department. Siguro ito ay na pinagsimulan ng mga ibang matagal nang naiinggit sa kanya at ngunit hindi niya lang pinapatulan, in one of your TV stations, I remember that fully because I was about to have dinner, and when I opened up DZMM, Secretary Duque was about to be interviewed, and a person who hated Lyndon for being appointed submitted a letter to Secretary Duque. Unfortunately, even before Secretary Duque had time to peruse over it in his office because Secretary Duque, just like all the other former secretaries of health, decided to tap Lyndon for infectious disease concerns and for emerging illnesses and even as a spokesperson. There was a two-page letter read verbatim before the eyes of all doctors listening Hindi lang yun. I just heard it later from colleagues that he had an ailing father who cannot sleep and who cannot eat without watching TV Patrol and without listening to DZMM. Yan po ang pangkaraniwan araw-araw. Yan yung ginagawa ng tatay niya. Yan yung ginagawa ng nanay niya. But on that night, laking gulat nila Nung binasa yung dalawang pahina ng sulat, a letter accusing him of corruption, a letter accusing him as a medical representative, a letter accusing him of being incompetent, a letter threatening him, and a letter calling on the president to remove him from the Department of Health. Hindi ko na pumatandaan, pero sa grabe at sa dami na akusasyon doon, we saw the immediate transformation of Lyndon. 
He was never the same old person that we used to see him. Moreover, he cannot forgive himself for inflicting that harm on his parents. Alam mo yung palagi niyang bukam bibig na, kaya ko namang masaktan ang sarili ko. Pero yung masaktan yung nanay at tatay ko, dahil lamang po eh ako eh napromote sa DOH, hindi po ba mas maganda na tanggalin na lang po ako bilang opisyal? But people were advising him not to give up. Why? Simply because he was the only infectious disease specialist in the whole department. And after that, he was always being ridiculed. Of course, hindi po siya payat na tao. Hindi po siya... I mean, mahirap po kasi minsan pag parang kinakansyawan ka. And you're a scientist or you're a doctor who is not used to all of this. Because doctors as they are, lahat po ng mga eksperto, hindi po mahilig humarap sa media. Because you're always busy in your work. If there are doctors who will have the whole time of their life facing media, it's because they're not practicing. Or it's because they are not busy with patients. Or it's because they have ambitions. And a very powerful TV network like your station unconsciously can ruin the lives of many of our scientists and our doctors. That's why I decided to come out and speak up for them. Because I've seen a lot of them suffer in pain. I've seen a lot of them who are brilliant scientists but who cannot speak up when it comes to talking before radio stations and TV stations. Moreover, wala naman silang maraming kakilala sa istasyon nyo at hindi naman sila pwedeng basta-basta pumunta na lang doon at magsabi kung ano ang kanilang nararamdaman. Next slide, please. And because of those repeated series of autopsies being conducted, so may I, may I ask, I, I, I know Mr. Chair, I've been thinking so hard about this. I really do not want to ask these questions. But then as a doctor, it is my moral obligation to do this. I can face all cases thrown to me because I am both a doctor and a politician. But doing this to scientists and other doctors, kawawa po sila. So ito po ang naging buhay nila. On a weekly basis, Ngayon nga, yung iba naka-quarantine, yung iba nagpupositibo. They have to, you know, hire lawyers, spend a lot, spend everything, every centavo that's being paid to them by the government, simply because you had a series of experts that you call, binansagan nyo pong eksperto, yung mga hindi naman totoong eksperto. So may I ask, the officers of ABS-CBN. First, what is your basis in labeling a doctor as a public health expert? Or, let's say in the case of autopsies, when do you call a doctor a pathologist? When do you give credential to a forensic pathologist when in fact he is not? And, because you mentioned that in responsible journalism, you really have to go through to a series of vetting. And because the flesh-eating fiasco already happened before, you already have systems installed. May I ask you, do you ever have an evidence, a statement from all the 21 countries plus the United States of America, plus all the countries who are members of the European Union, who are currently using the Nengvaksha vaccine, maski isa lang po, meron po ba kayong nakitang ebidensya o papel man lang na nagpapakitang may namatay dahil sa Nengvaksha? ABS-CBN, uh, maaari niyo pong uh, sagutin yung uh, tatlo apat na katanungan na ipinukul sa inyo ng uh, makapagbagdamdamin na si Congresswoman Janet Garin. Thank you Mr. Chair.
Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, in our pursuit of the truth about Dengvaksha, we sought information from various sources, including experts, including officials, previous and present uh, of the Department of Health. They gave us diverse opinions and observations about the vaccine and how it was selected to fight dengue in our country. We tried our best to do our stories in a fair and balanced way. But I do understand and acknowledge your concern about the use of non-experts. In fact, I myself received feedback that um, some of our commentators' interviews with non-experts tended to alarm people. And as a result of that, I acted on it immediately. And um, we dealt with the commentator as well. We also put an end to stories on Dengvaksha that tended to cause alarm among the general public, Your Honor. In relation to um, what happened with uh, Dr. Lyndon Lee Sui, Your Honor, um, pardon me po, hindi po ako masyadong pamilyar doon sa um, pagbabasa ng letter uh, that was com uh, uh, apparently complaining about him. However, let me just say this. We are a large news organization. Our news platforms have been integrated since several years ago. And sometimes uh, mistakes were made. We are far from perfect. We acknowledge that we make mistakes, Your Honor, and we try our best to do everything to correct them in a timely manner. Everything we do is really for the benefit of our viewers and for our public. Wala pong malisya doon. Kaya nga po, hinigpitan namin ang aming editorial controls para mapigilan ang mga ganitong pagkakamali. It is a continuing effort to improve our protocols and our processes as well as to professionalize our ranks even more, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, there were three phrases that struck me. First, the answer on timely manner. Second, no malice. Third, you consulted experts. May I inquire? Well, because when we talk about experts, we're not talking about personalities. We're talking about specialty societies, medical societies, and even the World Health Organization. So can you enlighten me? Or if you won't have time anymore, you can submit to us in writing. Sino po yung eksperto na sinasabi mo? You can just name the major expert that you have. Pangalawa, timely manner. Yeah, Mr. Chair, before that, just so we will not be um, deviated from the point of discussion. Sino po yung eksperto na sinasabi niyo? Um, I cannot remember at the top of my head, Your Honor, but I do remember that we had several news stories that we aired in our various platforms on Deng Baksha that relied on officials of the health department at that time. However, I acknowledge that there were also non-experts interviewed um, during our commentary programs on radio, Your Honor. Yun po ang pagkakaiba nung uh, mga content na nailabas po namin tungkol sa Deng Baksha. Do you have an advisor or a consultant who guides all your stations and your TV networks whom to interview, whom not to interview? Um, one of our public health experts, one of the public health experts that we consulted and um, provided us information to guide our editorial decision-making was uh, a Dr. Susi Mercado. That was uh, the height of the Deng Baksha controversy, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, um, I know Susi as a, as, a, as a doctor. What made you choose her? I mean, I don't want this to focus on her. Ang tinitingnan po natin ay yung action po ng inyong network. 
sa dami-dami po ng doktor sa buong Pilipinas at sa buong mundo, bakit po kinangan lahat ng mga usapin sa kalusugan ay kailangan ng gagaling kay Dr. Susie Mercado? Siya po ba isang infectious disease specialist? Did she ever practice in vaccinology? Did she ever handle an outbreak or a pandemic? Your Honor, no. Uh, she was also uh, advising us on other matters related to public health at that time because uh, we gave the issue of health uh, attention in our news programs, Your Honor. Yun naman pong ibang eksperto ay uh, binibiginawa po namin ang mga interviews sa aming mga news programs, Your Honor, and in the news reports. Yeah. Mr. Chair, if I may, mismo yung pagpipili niyo ng isang tao, I don't have anything against Susie Mercado, but on my case, I would say that no doctor holds the expertise of many. Kasi kung ang sinasabi niyo po, dun sa slide presentation niyo kanina, is that the true, um, uh, ang katotohanan at paglilingkod sa bayan, ang dayuni ng bawat mamamahayag, hindi po ba na kapag kayo ay pumipili ng iisa lamang pong tao who will tell you, advise you, or dictate on you, will there, hindi po ba sa gagawin yung ganyan, ay ang laki ng posibilidad na kung meron siyang personal na kalaban or meron siyang galit sa isang tao, ay magkakaroon ka ngayon ng pag-aaway-away among doctors because a giant TV station should have went through the Philippine Medical Association or even get the official statements. I mean, we, we know, of course, that um, she was interested for the WHO Regional Director Post. And the WHO Regional Director Post you needs a lot of backing from the government. Mr. Chair, I believe um, I still have uh, two more major issues that we'd like to handle. Pero ang ipinapakita lang po natin dito, kapag pala yung ABS-CBN ay eh merong taong kinuha at yung tao na yun ay eh may galit sa iyo dati o may galit sa mga tao sa departamento o may galit sa pagbabakuna o hindi mo na pagbigyan dati and it will be like their time to pay you back simply because they have a huge TV network against their back nakawawa naman po ang taong bayan Mr. Chair do, next slide please Um, uh, earlier, Mr. Chair, I had one question to ABS-CBN. Ang sabi nyo niya is you do extensive research. You consult diverse officials. We have the Philippine Medical Association, the umbrella organization of all doctors. Under the banner of the Philippine Medical Association, we have various organizations, both specialists and non-specialists. Bakit po ba? Sa dami-dami naman ng specialty organizations whose idea and input will not be biased. Bakit po ba kailangan ang inyong sasabihin sa larangan ng kalusugan ay nakatutok lang po sa isang tao? And again, if you were indeed doing your research, no less than the World Health Organization have repeatedly told you that the vaccine does not cause deaths, eh bakit po ba paulit-ulit nyo pa rin ginagawa yun? You mentioned about giving everybody the prerogative to speak up. Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, I'm going to submit to this August body a review of the interviews, the corresponding airtime by a few of the people of ABS-CBN kung saan halatang-halata po na parang ginawa ng black time yung inyong broadcast network para lang po sirain yung mga matitinong opisyal sa loob na kapag yung isang tao ay gustong magpa-appoint at walang bakante, ay lalapit lang sa isang empleyado nyo, isang ospesyal nyo, para sila makapasok. Do you look at this as responsible journalism? And moreover, you mentioned timely manner. Ilan po bang otopsiya 
ang nakandak muna ni attorney ni Dr. Erfe bago nyo ito hininto. And how long did it take you? A few days? A few months? Because if my memory recollection tells me right, hindi nyo po ito hininto hanggang nawalan na lang ng gana yung taong makinig. Mr. Chair, my last public health concern here. ABS-CBN should have been a very responsible network. Nakasaad po sa kanilang franchise agreement as contained in Republic Act number 7966. Responsibility to the public. You should conform to the ethics of honest enterprise. You should not disseminate or deliberately disseminate false information or willful misrepresentation to the detriment of the public interest. Ano po ang ginawa nyo? Araw-araw, si Dr. Erfe, kaharap ang, ang sambayan ng Pilipino, may dugo na autopsy. Una, autopsies should not be conducted by non-experts. Pangalawa, naglabas po ng hinain yung Philippine Society of Pathologists. The umbrella organization that holds the expertise to this. At ang pakiusap nila, please do not tolerate this. But it fell on deaf ears, Madam Speaker, Madam Resource Person. At ang sabi nga nila paulit-ulit sa inyo, bakit hindi nyo pwede itong gawin? Because as pathologists, they have been taught to strictly observe the confidentiality of the autopsy process and to respect the mortal remains of the patient. Not only that, it was very prominent in your series of exclusive interviews and exclusive shows that media men were filming the actual autopsy examination. Never have we paraded as doctors the organs of the autopsy cases we have done in public, dripping the blood. Not only was that inhumane and disrespectful to the dead, it was also dangerous on the part of the media people who were exposed to possible viruses and bacteria that may be present in dead bodies. Kailangan nyo po kasi talagang alagaan yung inyong mga empleyado dahil lang po ba kailangan makascoop, papupuntahin nyo sila at ipaparada nyo sila. It is tantamount to a public health menace. And Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, this was the cause a vaccine coverage plummeting. Now that you have heard from all over the world that viscerotropism and neurotropism does not exist in the so-called victims that you were calling. Kasi paulit-ulit po kami ang nagpapa reaching out to your station. The others listened. But ABS-CBN, because you're a big conglomerate and you're a giant, our voices fell on deaf ears. And even up to this point of time, with health issues, you keep on interviewing non-experts. And the problem there is, kapag ikaw ay isang doktor, binigyan ka ng airtime ng ABS-CBN, the public now believes you. Expertise is already measured by whom you invite and whom you give platform. Those autopsies exposed your people to a lot of bacteria and viruses. Hindi po pwedeng gawin yun. Yung pagparada natin ng mga duguang internal organs, ano po ang nangyari? Natakot lahat ng nanay. Bumalik ang polio, nagkaroon tayo ng outbreak ng measles, nagkaroon tayo ng outbreak ng Japanese encephalitis, dengue, chikungunya, name it, you have it. Now, it pains me to hear you clamoring that you have been helping the Filipino people, clamoring that you have been helping our country. Tulong po ba yung ibinalik nyo yung lahat ng no mga infectious diseases na natanggal na ng ating bansa? Tulong po ba na naging instrumento kayo that for the 10 years that we have been polio-free, it only took you and some of your people, dahil gusto nyo yung limelight, gusto nyo yung media, those irresponsible reporting, I do not care if you will be hitting me personally, okay lang po yun. 
Pero yung programang iningatan ng ating gobyerno ng ilang taon, just because if you cannot perceive the real experts in our country, how can you have responsible journalism? How can you convey the real public health information? How can you deny that you have been unknowingly and unconsciously became, become a part of that virus that's creeping on our public health? Mas masahol pa sa COVID-19 ang public health misinformation. Kaya, Mr. Chair, if I will be given another opportunity, I will come out with other specific situations where public health was sacrificed simply because of the fight to be the first one to come out with the news. You mentioned it is a response to call to tell the truth and work for a, greater, for a cause greater than yourselves. Yes, that should be the case. But apparently, there are a lot of deviations. Sabi niyo rin po kanina, ang paglalahad ng katotohanan at maglilingkod sa bayan ang layuni ng bawat mamamahayag. Tama po yun. Pero paulit-ulit po, nananawagan niyo mga doktor, why don't you focus on specialty organizations? If you talk about psoriasis, call the Philippine Society of Dermatologists and they will give you a person. If you talk about autopsies, call the Philippine Society of Pathologists and they will give you facts and not fake experts. If you want to know about public health, you have PCP, you have internists. You cannot just call people simply because they are your friends. Because responsibility is not all about friendship. Responsibility is all about standing by the mandate that was given to you by our government. Mr. Chair, I know Nagalit na po, wala na po akong oras. I really would have to enumerate other illnesses that has been sacrificed by the Claymore to be on number top um, in terms of bringing news to our people. At uulitin ko po, napakarami po ng mga mababait at mga galing tao sa ABS-CBN. But if the management insist to be deaf, mute, or blind, to the realities on the ground. You cannot say that your heart is for the people if you will only take care of officials. You cannot say that your heart is for the people if you cannot let our lowly brothers and sisters speak up and be heard. You mentioned at the company level you have an independent network ombudsman that receives, investigates, and makes recommendations on complaints against news personnel. And these recommendations are acted upon by the head of news in a timely manner. If this was done in a timely manner, all the gains that we have for the past 25 years could not have been drowned just because of irresponsible journalism. Mr. Chair, I thank you for the indulgence and the perseverance. I hope I will be given the next opportunity to touch on other public health programs that have been ruined simply because responsible journalism is cloaked with a desire to be on the top. So let me just ask this direct question, and I do hope you will not take it against us, doctors. Kasi ang pakiramdam po ng ating mga doktor, ang pakiramdam po ng ating mga scientists at the Research Institute of Tropical Medicine, the doctor who you, whom you have been lambasting because she was the principal investigator of the Vaksha, is the same doctor that made the BCG, the vaccine you are using, for your, TB, for your children against TB. They are the same scientists, Filipino scientists, that did polio. They are the same scientists who did the vaccine on missiles. They are the same scientists who are actively developing the vaccine on HIV. They are now the same scientists being tapped to develop COVID vaccine. Pero ando dun yung takot. Ando dun yung kaba. Kasi alam nila kahit magaling sila sa larangan ng kalusugan, pagdating po sa media, wala po silang panahon na magkapagkape-kape at mag-PR sa inyo kasi wala silang kakayanan at wala po silang ganun kalawak na oras para gawin yun. To Mr. Katibak, whom I respect so much, I hope you can answer my question truthfully, Honestly, 
and as a Filipino. Ginamit niyo po ba ang dingvaksya para mapalapit at akala niyo ay mapapalapit kayo kay Pangulong Duterte by hitting the previous administration? Hindi po, Your Honor. Will you commit that you can duck an investigation? By the way, Mr. Chair, pasensya na lang po. I remember. I tried to always erase this on my mind because I don't want to be a bitter person. But I remember when I was heavily challenged as a doctor and I was criticized because I'm from the province and I'm not from Manila. I accepted all of that. But what pained me is that you gave me an instance to answer before DZMM. At doon po ay natuwa ako. Dahil in-interview ako, nung umagang yun, nagbigay ako ng sagot at sabi ko, I will prioritize this. I will answer this. Because with all the controversies, I have to rush. We had to rush my father to the hospital dahil na-stroke siya sa sama ng loob. And when that happened, ang sabi ko sa sarili ko, talaga naman pala na dapat hangaan ko yung ABS-CBN. Because after all the months of the lies and the unfairness, you gave me 30 minutes of time in DZMM to be interviewed. At dun namin, dun ko sinabi ang buong katotohanan. But when I reached the hospital bed, of my father who was being transported to the ICU, he was looking at the TV, he was crying, and he was telling me, ano yung nangyayari? Because on your TV patrol news, it was all over the headline, Garin apologizes to Dengvaksha parents. I did everything to call your station. I was in touch with all the people that we can call dun sa mga numero ibinigay nyo. Kasi hanggang sa ANC, paulit-ulit yon, paulit-ulit yon. At ang sabi ko, pwede bang wag nyo na munang ibalita yon? Because it's not true. And I told them, just give me time. Para lang yung tatay ko, mamatay man siya o makasurvive man siya, hindi niya dalihin sa pagkamatay niya yung sama ng nararamdaman niya because he heard me when I was being interviewed. And if you can prove in that interview that I did apologize for the Dengvaksha program, I will immediately resign from Congress. Napupudpud na po yung daliri namin kasama ko yung aking mga kapatid at nanay sa kakatawag. But it fell on deaf ears. It fell on deaf ears. I just wanted to ask you, at isa lang po yung tanong namin. Ang sabi namin, when did you have that interview on TV Patrol? Naka-headline pa. And your people were telling me, ay hindi po. This is from the management. This is from the management. Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, I will not be personal on this. It is enough for me that what happened to me will not happen to other doctors. I might be privileged enough because I have my mandate and the people in my district who have known me and who will not believe in the lies, even if it will be ABC and peddling this. But I am worried that if this will be done again to the other doctors and the other scientists or to the patients who are discriminated, ano po ba ang laban nila? And as a member of this August body, I look at it as my extreme responsibility that your management should not allow this to happen. Sir, moms, please review my interview in DZMM. I can give you a tape. And then go into TV Patrol on the same day. You had that news item repeated for straight three days. At ang sagot nyo lang sa akin, eh ganun eh, yun yung instruction ng management, we heard you. I even asked, when did TV Patrol interviewed me? Because I was just in that hospital taking care of my father who felt very bad that the TV station that he looked up to since he was young was the same TV station who will 
be an instrument of a few people who were not happy. If you are part of the executive, when you become a secretary, a member of the cabinet, you cannot please everybody. There are tough decisions that you have to make. And there were a lot of tough decisions that I had to make because we had to cleanse DOH from corruption. There were a lot of tough decisions we had to make at FDA. At marami po kaming ginawang desisyon para linisin ang PhilHealth. But if your TV station will be allowed to be an instrument of a few people who would like to be appointed or a few people who would like to win in an election or of a few people who are not really experts but who are pretending to be experts or a few people who will get back at us because their businesses were ruined because we have to put systems ngayon ang daming nagrereklamo sa DOH but did you ask them why they cannot move because they are afraid of ABS-CBN gustong gusto ng mga doktor na gumalaw gustong gusto ng DOH na gumalaw Pero gawat galaw nila, bawat desisyon, bawat gawin nilang tama, ang bukang bibig nila, baka malindon lisoy kami. I do hope, Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, that the management of ABS-CBN will look into this. Kasi kung mabigyan po natin sila ng prangkisa at narinig ko po sa ilang kasamahang natin, ayaw natin mawalan ng trabaho ang ating mga kababayan. Ayaw natin ipitin ang isang malaking negosyante. We are all one with this. But if protecting a business conglomerate would mean tolerating the lies on public health, would mean tolerating the fake experts that you continuously interview on your station, then we have to stand up. Even if we lose this vote, I have to stand up. I have to convey the sentiments of our doctors because not every doctor is given the privilege to sit in Congress. Not every doctor is privileged to be a mother. And as a mother, and as a legislator, and as a vaccinologist, I can sacrifice my political post if only I have to stood up by the Hippocratic Oath that I have always agreed upon at patuloy ko pong tatayuan at gagawin ang nararapat para sa mga bakuna dahil vaccination saves lives and now we are in this mess now we are in this pandemic this pandemic is already a big problem pero ang hindi nasasabi for once in the history of vaccination when missiles mumps and rubella vaccine was ruined because of a fake expert who went to the U.S., who is from the U.K. Ano po ang ginawa ng U.K.? Ano po ang ginawa ng Amerika? Ano po ang ginawa ng mga media? They came out with the truth. And that doctor, tinanggalan ng lisensya. Pero dito sa atin, pag merong gustong magpasikat, gustong magpa-appoint, all you have to do is approach a reporter from your station, befriend him, and then they will have the luxury of time, the luxury of a big conglomerate, the luxury of being called an expert simply because you allowed them to be. Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, even up to this point of time, I still don't know whether to vote yes or no. I'm still thinking. My vote might just be one vote. Maliit lang po ito. But it is enough for me that if ever we grant them the renewal of their franchise, all of this should be looked into by ABS-CBN. Because when you manage a corporation, success is not measured by money. Success is measured by the real difference that you give to our people. Not the difference that you mouth on the presentations that you make, but the difference that in your conscience you have. To the family of Azek Lindon Lee Sui, I know that no words, nor even an apology can ABS-CBN can bring back his life. But when he died, defending himself, being very bitter, all that I can say is that 
maybe God has his purpose. And maybe the Committee on Good Government and the Committee on Legislative Franchises should be a very vital instrument. That big as you are, when you grow bigger and you grow bigger and you grow bigger, you always have to remember that at one point, you will never grow big if before, before God's eyes, you will be part of continuous public health lies. So I do hope that people who will be speaking before your station are real experts. And again, my last appeal. Please do not focus on personalities. Kami pong mga doktor, malaking bangayan kung saan ka nag-aral. Kung galing ka sa ganito, kung galing ka sa ganito, ikaw ba'y taga Manila, ikaw ba'y taga probinsya. That is why in some countries and in many countries, the Secretary of Health, the Minister of Health is a non-doctor. Because the countries do that so that the sitting Ministry of Health will be neutral. No biases. But if you get a certain person, and that certain person dictates whom to interview, what to say, what to put on the news, then you do injustice to the people who have probably refused her or refused him at one point in their lives. You now become part of a bigger virus we call fake news and public health misinformation. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat, Congresswoman Garin. At ngayon po, dyan po nagtatapos yung atin pong hearing, ating, uh, ating interpellation. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Congarin. Mr. Chair, very quickly, if I may. Marami po kasi ang nagtatanong, ang dami pong nagtatanong ng mga constituents ko. Alam po nila na pag-usapan na matagal ang prangkisa ng ABS-CBN. But they're asking why the issues now are seemingly not in relation to the issues being discussed before. Mr. Chair, just to set it again on the record, today's topic is about bias reporting. And Section 4 of the franchise granted to ABS-CBN states that willful misrepresentation should have no place. Uulitin ko po, Mr. Chair, karamihan po sa ating mga kasamahan dito, ayaw po, halos lahat po tayo, if not all of us, ayaw po natin may mga taong nawawalan ng trabaho. And Mr. Chair, just to reiterate, I conveyed the information I gave earlier, not because I want to criticize, but simply because I was abiding by my task as a legislator. I'm very proud and happy to see a report by Christian Isguera narrating the facts. I also know of a very good friend, Tito Boyabunda, who actually looks at health as a primary topic. But Mr. Chair, I also saw posts by some employees and officers of ABS-CBN, kumakailan lang, again saying, na tama po yung balita dahil nanggaling ito dun sa DZMM at nirelay lang. Mr. Chair, I really don't want to dwell on this. But again, we are all here to possibly point some facts that can be corrected. Kasi tama po si Mr. Julius Babaw. Marami po ang mga bagay na dapat at pwedeng mapag-usapan. Pero kung hindi po natin ito aaminin, ay mahihirapan po tayong matugunan ang mga maliliit na problema na pwedeng maging malaki. This is just three minutes, Mr. Chair. Allow me to play the actual interview. Merry Christmas po sa lahat, no? both the nag-o-oppose at both the tumataayon. Ang hindi lang kasi maganda parang ito yung isang issue na pinaghati-hati yung ating tansa. Oh, at ang pinakamasakit, yung issue na pinigyan ng sakot yung mga nanay at mga pasyente 
na ang dapat kasi pagka may ganitong informasyon, kagaya ng ginawa ng mga ibang bansa, okay. nagkaroon ng emergency meeting yung departamento mm. at yung kanilang uh, head ng departamento itinawag. Mm. Tiningnan ano ba yung mga datos, ano yung naging reason, and uh, kaya nga siya sinanong ko yung Brazil, ano po ang naging unan mm. yung reaksyon? So the secretary called for an emergency meeting, tiningnan nila yung datos kasi dun sa kanila, 8 out of 10 ay nagkakadengue sa atin, 9 out of 10. Uh, ito yung kanilang mga solusyon. And then, ang unang naging labas is that in-explain sa mga nanay, sa mga doktor, sa mga pasyente, at sinabihan, these are the steps we are taking. At naging common lang yung talking head. No? Kasi sa atin kasi naunahan ng sakot. At minsan pag nasusobrahan tayo ng sakot, nawawala na po yung talagang focus kung ano bang dapat gawin. So sa mga nanay, um, pasensya na po talaga. No? Um, I, 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 I would like to apologize hindi po doon dahil po sa mga nanay um, pasensya na po talaga no? um, I, 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 I would like to apologize hindi po doon dahil sa bakuna kundi parang at sa Pilipino na nangyayari yung ganitong magpapanik na yung bigla kasi ganito rin ang ginawa sa Ebola pinanik ng tao na hindi naman Ebola yung pasyente hinahawakan namin malaria ang sabi huwag punta sa kabalyo eh yung sundalo yun Sundalo yun, ando dun sa isang isla, linagay sa PPE, nag-chill-chill. Sabi ko, hindi pwede yun, dalhin sa hospital yan. Kasi pagka ikaw yung malaria at nag-chill-chill uh, at nag-chill-chill, pwede umakyat sa utak yan. Buhay ng sundalo natin yan. So, this is, saka pinagdirian yung mga sundalong galing sa labas. Parang, it's because of uh, panic nga. No? Pero, at the end of the day, ang tingin ko is, these are all fighters and challenges in life. Right. As long as the truth is on our Mr. Chair, I would like to insert into the records of this committee the actual recorded interview I had with DZMM. It started with my saying, bilang isang Pilipinong doktor, ako po ay humihingi ng paumanhin na minsan may mga away-away yung mga doktor at tuloy nagpapanik yung tao. And then we went on discussing Ebola, malaria, at iba pang mga sakit. And at the end, I was asked, Kayo po ba ay natatakot? Where are you going from here? At ang sabi ko po, Because we have the truth and we are backed with science, wala po kaming dapat katakutan. This is just probably an isolated case or a repeated isolated case. Ma'am Reyes, Sir Carlo Katigbak, I am not putting this forward because I want to discuss it here. You had several, even a few emissaries who approached me. Congressman Lagman talked to me. Congressman Benny Abante talked to me. Isa po ang paulit-ulit na sinasabi ko. We have a lot of patients. We have a lot of doctors. We have a lot of people who look up to ABS-CBN. And when it happens, that people believe in a very big institution because even my family, my daughter and myself, look up very much to you. The reason why we brought this up, not only me, probably other members of Congress, is that we believe that your strength can make a difference. And public health should not be played at. Public health should not be meddled or modeled with mis willful misrepresentation because that statement, when it was bloated, resulted to vaccine mistrust. And vaccine mistrust led to several public health problems. Hindi lang po ako, hindi lang po kami mga doktor, but even the former secretaries of health and the academe appealed before you in open news and in open, um, and in open fora, but it fell on deaf ears. Naintindihan po namin yon kung hindi nyo kami mapapaniwalaan because as you has conveyed earlier, you have full trust in Dr. Susie Mercado who is not an infectious disease specialist and to our belief, she was not involved in the department during the time. Be that as it may, I hope that you will retrieve the original copy of this tape. It's not all about me. It's all about possible victims that can be there in the future, not because of you,
but because of some people who might abuse their being aligned with your station. With that, Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, I move that an original copy of the transcript be submitted to this committee. And for the record, Mr. Chair, the posts being made by some of your officials currently on Twitter and on social media explaining that the apology was because I was calling for non-panic is again an added insult to the injury that was already created. And jajan po yung mga tapes, and jajan po ang katotohanan, I stand by my word, if you will be able to prove that that TV patrol news segment that was repeatedly aired during the wake of my father, ako po ay talagang magre-resign because I don't need to be in government to be of service to the people. And just like you, ABS-CBN does not need to be in government because your network can already make a big difference. It can make or unmake people. It can ruin lives, but you can also make a lot of difference as long as you don't practice willful misrepresentation. If the, I don't know, Mr. Chair, if um, we can get the commitment from the Honorable President and CEO of ABS-CBN. Uh, Chair, Chair, would like to uh, no, um, ask ABS-CBN to comply na lang po with the request of Congresswoman Garin. Yes, ma'am. We, uh, Your Honor, we uh, acknowledge all of your concerns and we commit to look into um, each of the concerns that you raised. Po. 